Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be discussing the problem hoof, paper, scissors, minus one. In this problem, Bessie and Elsie are playing a variant of rock, paper, scissors. In this variant, there are n symbols. Each player plays two symbols at the same time, and we're given data on each pair of symbols, determining if that pair is a win, loss, or a draw for a given symbol, i. And the objective that we want to work out here is given the two symbols played by Elsie, we want to count all ordered pairs, so all possible plays from Bessie, um, that guarantees Bessie wins. And what that means is Bessie has to play at least one symbol that beats both of Elsie's symbols. So let's take a look at an example to try to make this nice and concrete. So this is how our data is formatted in the problem. It looks a little bit intimidating, but it's not too bad. So um, each row corresponds to a symbol, and each column corresponds to a symbol. Um, and the first row tells you information about what symbol one beats. The second row tells you information about symbol two. The third row tells you inf information about symbol three and so on. So for example, the first row here tells us that one draws when it plays against one, which makes sense. A symbol playing against its elf will always draw. The second row tells us that symbol two wins against symbol one and symbol two draws to itself. The third row tells us that three beats one and three beats two draws against itself. And the fourth row tells us that four loses to symbol one, wins against symbol two, wins against symbol three, and draws to itself. So that is sort of summarized right here. And then let's suppose that Elsie plays the move 1-1. One, one. So we're just doing this to make the example a little bit simpler uh, because it's easier if she plays the same symbol twice, uh, but she could play two different symbols. So what we need to do is we need to find all of the symbols that beat 1. And so which symbols beat 1? Well, 2 beats 1 and 3 beats 1. So 2 and 3 beat both of Elsie's numbers. The symbols that do not beat 1 are 1 itself and 4. So we have sort of a collection of two good symbols. These are the symbols that B Bessie wants to play. And we have two bad symbols. Bessie can still play these, but they don't help Bessie beat Elsie's numbers. And we want to think about what are all of the possible ordered pairs that have at least one good symbol in them. So we can sort of write these out. So uh, what we have here is we'll see that there are 12 pairs, but they've been grouped together in a very specific way. We've grouped all of the good symbols paired with good symbols in this first column, all of the good symbols paired with a bad symbol in this column, and all the bad symbols paired with a good symbol in this column. And what you'll notice here is order does matter. So 2, 1 is a different pair than 1, 2. So if we want to count the total number of ordered pairs for Bessie, all we need to know is how many values are going to show up in this column, how many values are going to show up in this column, and how many values are going to show up in this column. And to calculate that, we can just do a little bit of math. So uh, for the left value here, we have good choices. For the right value, we have another good pair choices. So that's going to multiply together. And the number of entries in this first column is just going to be the number of good symbols times the number of good symbols. Same thing for this second column, but now with the bad symbols being on the right. So we're, for each good symbol, we're going to have the number of bad symbols choices. And then on the last column here, we're going to multiply the number of bad symbols with the number of good symbols. So for example, you can see that one appears twice because there are two good symbols. Four appears twice because there are two good symbols it can be paired with. So that brings our total to this expression. So once we 
calculate the number of good symbols, we can just apply this math formula to solve the problem. And um, if you want to apply it to this particular test case, when you multiply everything out, you can see that we do indeed get 12, which is the number of ordered pairs Bessie can play. We are now ready to begin coding. So let's start by reading in the input. So we're going to read in N and M. These are the number of symbols and the number of games played by Elsie. And then we're going to read in this data triangle. Um, so right now it's being read in as a list of lists. That would be a vector of vectors in C++ or an array list of array lists in Java. You may find it easier to simply store it in a N by N two-dimensional array. So that is an alternative option. Uh, then we're going to loop over the M games, and for each game, we're going to read in a pair of symbols played by Elsie. And note that I'm subtracting one from this pair of symbols so that they are zero indexed values instead of one indexed values. This will mean they interface nicely with my data array. And then we will store a counter for the number of good symbols. These are the symbols that beat both S1 and S2. And we're going to loop over all symbols to count this value good. And this brings us to sort of the final tricky part of the question, which is working out, does symbol I beat S1? And to do this, we come up with what looks like a scary condition, but is actually quite simple. I want you to first focus on this half of the condition. This is saying that if I is greater than S1, we are going to check if AI S1 is a win. So we're going to go to the I throw and look at the S1 column and check is there a W there. So that would imply that I beats S1. But this only works if I is actually greater than S1. If I is less than or equal to S1, then we instead have to check row S1 and look for a loss. So does S1 lose to I? Then that's equivalent to saying I beats S1. So these are just two separate conditions that check does I beat S1, but it's from two separate perspectives. So one perspective where I is less than or equal to SI or S1, and one perspective where I is greater than uh, S1. And then if that's true, then we get to check, does I beat S2? And the good news here is it's the exact same condition. We just replace all occurrences of S1 with S2. And then if both of these conditions are true, then we'll increase the good count. And then once we have the good count, we can calculate the bad count as simply N minus the good count. So every symbol that's not good is bad. And then since we already did the hard work of figuring out this math formula, the last step here is we can just print out good times good plus two times good times bad. So this is the good times good part right here. And this is the two times good plus or good times bad part. So that completes the program. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.